So this is the arcade machine that I've been working on the past couple of months. Um, I finally completed for the most part. I still don't have any stickers on the outside, but uh, in terms of construction, electronics, and software, it's it's pretty much done. Um, so you can see on the outside here, it's constructed out of half-inch MDF, painted black. Um, it has this T-molding around the edge. This is stuff you can buy off eBay. Um, because I used half-inch MDF, it created a bunch of problems, uh, one of which being I couldn't find the correct T-molding, because most of them were three-quarters of an inch. Uh, but I was able to find some 9 16ths, which is really close to half an inch, and that was able to work out well. Across the front, I have this metal uh, piece of aluminum, this angled piece of aluminum, um, to protect this front edge, and also because uh, the lip on the T-molding uh, is half an inch long, so if I were to cut a slot in the front of this uh, piece of wood, it would just cut straight in half. So I had to figure out something else to put on the front. Um, I have a 24 inch monitor here, as you can see. It's not the biggest monitor and it's also not the right aspect ratio for most of the old games, but some of the old games were in 16 by 9 so it works for them. Otherwise, you just get big black bars on the side. I have full arcade controls. Uh, these buttons I bought from Element 14. Um, they work in the menus, they work in the games, they, that's what you control everything with. Uh, I would set it for two players, so six buttons and a joystick per player. Um, that's the front of it. I used brad nails and uh, wood glue to construct the uh, machine itself. That was a really bad idea because trying to cut out the slot for the T-molding, I had to route around the nails. You can see them here on the edge. I had to route around them and just cut slots in between them, which uh, would have been avoided if I just used all glue or used something a little bit more clever to construct it. If we go around to the back, you can see some of the electronics. Um, this is the monitor. I took it out of its bezel so I can mount it flush against the wood bezel that I made for it. Um, it's a relatively simple monitor, there wasn't much to it. There's just the control buttons down here, which luckily have the labels for what they do on the PCB. It's got the um, I.O. thing, the I.O. board for monitors, for your inputs, and then just the monitor itself. This is held in with wooden blocks on the side here. They have felt under there as to not put too much pressure on the monitor. You can see I have a HDMI cable running down and around. Could have got a shorter HDMI cable down to the Raspberry Pi at the bottom. Um, I'd use a DVI converter because uh, the monitor didn't have HDMI on it, but that was simple to fix. Um, up here, I have just one little tiny speaker. It gets reasonably loud. Um, I had to use an amp because the Raspberry Pi does not put output very much power at all in terms of audio, so I hooked it up to an amp. Um, this is just a cheap old computer desktop. Uh, amp for a cheap set of speakers. Um, there's the power supply for it. It's just a just a convert over 12 volts for this thing. Uh, it's got a potentiometer on it, on like an off on button. And you control the volume from it. So that just leads up to the speaker, which which works. It's not the loudest speaker in the world, but it's good enough for just some simple epic music. Uh, here is the power bar that everything plugs into. You have the monitor, the amp, and then the Raspberry Pi. Um, this is also the master switch for the entire thing. Once you flip that, the entire thing turns on. Um, and you can see down here is where all the buttons in the Raspberry Pi are connected to. I can actually just take that out and give you a better look at it. So here's the bottom of the control board flipped over. Uh, the control board and the monitor just sit in there with friction uh, on these ledges that are built in, as you can see. Um, I didn't attach them uh, 
permanently to the thing just in case I need to do any repairs on it or anything like that. Um, but you can see all the switches all wired in. Um, this is just a piece of prototyping board that I used to create the ground planes for the switches. There is the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, I don't have a heat sink on it. It doesn't seem to get too hot just with the emulators that I use. Um, you could put one on if you wanted to. Um, but you can see the, the joysticks and then the six buttons per player all wired into the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. Um, I have a program installed uh, that's from an Adafruit tutorial uh, that lets you take in the GPIO inputs and use them on the RetroPie uh, operating system just as normal keyboard controls and then you can just map them to the emulator controls and that works out pretty well. So uh, I'll just start up and show you that it works. So once you flip the switch it starts the boot process and we get the splash screen for RetroPie and then it should boot straight into uh, the emulation station. Boot times aren't that bad. Only about like 30 seconds to a minute. Alright, now that we're booted into the uh, emulation station, you can see all the uh, emulators. This uh, operating system has tons of emulators built in. They don't show up if you don't have any ROMs or anything uh, inside of them. Most of these, like this Apple one, just have like uh, system manager and random programs in them. Um, the main one I've been using is the MAME emulator because it is an old arcade machine. So that was the whole idea with this, play old arcade games. Um, I also do have the, it comes with these uh, shareware, old uh, Quake and Doom and Duke Nukem games uh, by default. Uh, these just come with it as soon as you install it. Um, but let's boot up a main game. I can show you using the arcade controls. As you can see, the arcade K controls do work in the menus here. Uh, this just, that's a B for back, this is like the main menu, this is other options, um, this is A, that's B, and the joystick lets you navigate around. Um, so we'll boot into, uh, I don't know, let's go with um, something close to Outback Order. Go with um, let's go with asteroids. So you can hear. I don't know if you can hear, but I can hear um, the speaker in the top corner. It, it produces a decent sound. I can turn it up more. I am getting some background hiss, and I read that it has to do with having uh, not very good ground connection on your power supply um, but if I crank the volume on the operating system and turn the volume on the amp down really low it seems to disappear so that's how I've dealt with that uh, so far so uh, these buttons are to add coins and then you can press the start button after that this is start that's coins this is like your main fire button and you can use the joystick um, you can see the arcade controls do work, and we do get sound, and we do get video. It doesn't look too bad. I would have preferred having a CRT in here, but uh, they're a lot heavier, so I would have to reinforce the design a lot more, and they're also a little bit more rare than just buying a brand new 24-inch um, LCD. Um, some of the problems I ran through into while building this, um, I've definitely learned a lot uh, building this. Uh, if I were to build another one, there's lots of things I would change, lots of things I would do differently. Um, this is just basically the bare bones to qualify as an arcade machine. Um, there's a lot more you could do to make it better. Um, and there's a lot of things you could do differently as well. Um, some of the things I did wrong was using half-inch MDF. Uh, you you want to use, it doesn't really matter what wood you use, um, 
probably not MDF because MDF is just awful to work with. It's heavy, it's dusty, it doesn't look very good, um, and it absorbs paint, it absorbs glue, it's just not very good. Um, but you, whatever you use, you definitely want to use three quarter inch. I've, I've died. Um, as opposed to half inch because almost all arcade machines are designed to use three quarter inch um, uh, wood as opposed to half inch. That's kind of the industry standard. So all like your key molding and any accessories you buy are probably going to be molded for three quarter inch wood. Um, and you're also going to not want to uh, use just any old acrylic paint. I realized that uh, finishing is a lot more important than you would initially think. With um, the arcade machines, you're going to want to use oil-based paints. I'm not an expert on finishing things, but there's definitely you're going to want to do some research before you just slap on some layers of paint. Um, so you can get a look a lot nicer. You also want to not use a nail gun. Um, wood glue is fine, but you're going to want to do it in such a way that it's much stronger um, in design and you don't have to use nails. Um, I think there's a way you could probably do it with pocket screws. And there's ways you could probably do it with a nail gun if you tried to figure out a better way than just nailing on through the side of the wood. Um, but it's probably best if you just avoid the nail gun. Um, in terms of the electronics, I'm pretty pleased with how those went. Uh, there's not too much I'll change about the Raspberry Pi is sufficiently powerful for any games I want to play and it, it, you're able to plug in the joystick straight into the GPIO um, it just took one program enabled into uh, make that into keyboard controls uh, the RetroPie operating system is pretty cool it's, it's um it gives you all your emulators right there uh, there's no uh, desktop to it so you don't have to worry about running a program over a desktop like if you do it on Windows um, instead you just boot straight into the uh, whole uh, emulation station which is pretty cool and gives you all your emulators there and everything so that's the whole arcade machine if you've enjoyed me talking about it I have three more videos uh, of building it. Uh, it's a little bit more in depth than this. One of making the cabinet, one of installing the electronics, and one of installing the operating system. Um, you can check those videos out. But other than that, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching.